Hey everyone, Teo here. Today I want to talk about the features to look out for when it comes to buying a portable monitor. I have reviewed many portable monitors over the years and I own three myself. Now there are timestamps provided for this video which you can use to jump to different sections of the video. You can also use the timestamps as a form of checklist to go through when you buy your own monitor. First thing I want to talk about is brand. The brand is not important because many of these portable monitors have the same generic design and I suspect many actually come from the same factory just that they are sold under different brands sold by different companies. So if you see two different monitors with the same design with the same list of specifications or features those two monitors are probably the same monitor. So this monitor I have here doesn't even have branding on the front or the back or anywhere and I like it because it has no branding. And now let's talk about the features starting with brightness. Get a bright monitor because if the monitor is too dim you won't be able to see anything and it's going to give you a miserable user experience. Brightness is measured by nits or cd slash m2. If the brightness is not listed on the product page I won't even consider the product and I would usually discount the brightness that is listed. For example, this monitor was actually listed as 400 nits, but based on what I've measured, the maximum brightness is actually 207 nits. So if a monitor is listed as 300 nits, I would probably just discount it by half, 50%, so that monitor is probably going to be around 150 to 200 nits. So how many needs do you need for a bright room environment such as the room that I'm in now? I would say about 150 to 200 needs. So when you're looking at the product page, look for two times as much. Look for 300 to 400 needs. Next thing I want to talk about is power. So currently this monitor is powered by one single USB-C cable which is quite convenient because it reduces cable clutter. However, there is a limit with this cable. With this particular monitor, this can only drive the brightness up to 90% and if I increase it beyond 90%, the screen will black out. So to drive this monitor at 100% brightness, I need to attach an additional cable for more power. Some monitors can achieve maximum brightness with one single USB-C cable. You just have to look for those monitors. If you connect your monitor to a laptop, it's going to drain the laptop battery quite fast. So you may want to attach additional power to your laptop or to the monitor. If you are using HDMI, mini HDMI or display port, you need to connect two cables. One for the video and one for power because the video ports, they do not provide power. Next feature to look out for, color support. I highly recommend you go with monitors that support 100% sRGB and if you need higher or better color accuracy, go with 100% Adobe RGB. 100% Adobe RGB monitors are great for visual content creation, for editing photos, videos, graphic design work. Monitors can come with glossy reflective glass surfaces which actually makes the colors look more vibrant. However, as you can see, the reflections are quite distracting. There are also monitors with anti-glam matte surfaces which will diffuse the reflection and you can still see the colors beneath. As long as you look at the display from the front, you won't be able to see any of those uh, reflections. With a glossy display, even though there may be no light reflections, I can still see my own face in the reflection because there is no anti-reflective coating for this particular display. And most portable displays with glossy screens don't have anti-reflective coating. For good viewing angles, go with monitors that use the IPS panel so that you will get minimal color shift regardless of where you are viewing the monitor from. And as you can see, this monitor is really quite reflective. Display size, which should you get? 15.6 inch is more common and this is more portable. Personally for me, I would prefer 17.3 inch because having a larger display will provide a better user experience. But that's just me. For some reason, the resolution options available for portable monitors are either Full HD, 1080p or 4K UHD. 
1440p resolution is quite rare. Now these two displays are 15.6 inches and 1080p resolution is very usable on a 15.6 inch display. From one arm's distance away, the 1080p resolution will actually show pixelation. Pixelation is noticeable for the user interface elements such as icons and text on a 1080p display. And this is the 4K UHD resolution where all the visuals are sharp and detailed. If you have the budget, having a 4K display is certainly nice because all the visuals, the pictures, the text, everything will be sharp, very detailed. Whereas on the 1080p display, you are going to see slight pixelation, which to me is actually not a big deal. The advantage of 1080p display is it's more affordable compared to 4K resolution. I'm not sure if you notice this thing below my monitor, which is blue tag. I'm using blue tag here to prevent the monitor from moving forward because there are no rubber feet at the bottom. So without this, the monitor is just going to slide forward and this is not the angle that I want. I've used this monitor for more than a year and this is the very typical cover stand that's included with most monitor. And with time, this part here is going to get looser and looser and it's going to sink lower and lower. Unfortunately, there are no rubber feet beneath. This monitor that I have actually has two rubber feet. So this is actually nicer. This is the monitor from Seaforce. So while this monitor has two rubber feet at the bottom, I can't tell you whether the other monitors from Seaforce will have the rubber feet as well. Because when you look at product photos, they usually do not show you the bottom of the monitor. So having a good stand is actually very important. This part here will definitely become looser with time. This monitor is newer compared to the other one. And this cover stand can actually be removed because it's magnetic. This is the cover stand that I prefer because there are grooves here to prevent the display from moving forwards. And even if this becomes loose in the future, the grooves are there to prevent the display from moving forward. There are portable monitors with covers where you can fold a little triangle at the back to prop up the display. There are monitors with built-in stands as well. However, I've not used any before, so I can't say much about the durability or how well they work. There are some portable monitors with a hole at the corner and you can actually have a pen go through it and use this as a stand. However, this is not very stable and the monitor can topple forward if you knock it accidentally. These are the buttons for navigating the OSD and changing settings. With this particular monitor, I can adjust the brightness, contrast, the sharpness, the color temperature, the RGB. Those are the important color settings I can change. Some of the touch screen displays actually allow you to adjust the settings with your finger. So this is actually quite convenient. I actually don't mind the physical buttons with the non-touch screen displays because once you set the settings, you don't always have to go back and set those settings again. And that brings me to the next feature, touch screen. So having touch screen is quite convenient. You can use your finger to click on things. You can scroll up and down, zoom in and out. All the finger gestures are supported with Windows OS. The downside is you have to clean the screen to remove the fingerprints and touch screen displays are usually more expensive compared to non-touch screen displays. Ports are important, obviously. Most portable monitors nowadays come with USB-C and this particular one comes with a mini HDMI for use with computers that do not have USB-C. On the other side, there is a 3.5 mm audio jack this micro USB port is for OTG devices such as keyboards and mouse. So if you connect your display to a computer, you can actually connect keyboard and mouse using this port if your keyboard and mouse is still using micro USB. And that's the button for the OSD. This monitor is much thicker. So this is thick enough to have a full-size HDMI port, 
a mini display port this is USB type C for video and power and this is USB-C for power. Some monitors can be VESA mounted. For this particular monitor, the VESA dimensions are 7.5 by 7.5 centimeters. Now for monitors that have the VESA mount, those monitors are going to be much thicker and less portable compared to monitors that don't have the VESA mount. Portable monitors may have built-in speakers and unfortunately the audio quality from such built-in speakers are usually not that great. For this particular monitor, it actually has speakers on the left and also on the right side so you can get some stereo effect. However, the speakers are not that powerful and audio quality is not that great. For this monitor, the speaker is actually located at the back pointing upwards so when you are watching shows or listening to music it's going to feel like someone is talking to you but not facing you for mac os users who want to buy a 4k resolution portable display note that some of those high res displays may not be recognized as a high dpi display on Mac OS, which is to say that if you choose the 1080p workspace because you want to see the larger icons, the text, you are going to get the pixelated 1080p workspace. Thankfully, there's a workaround, so you can use this app called Easy Res or another app called Switch Res X to let you choose the 1080p workspace with the sharpness of 4K. If you need recommendations, I recommend you check out the portable monitors from Seaforce and Uperfect because these two companies make a huge variety of portable monitors with different sizes, color support, features, resolution and I've tested some of them myself and they work quite well. And lastly, if you have intention to buy any portable monitors, do consider using the affiliate links that I have for you in the video description below. Alright, thanks for watching. I hope this video is useful. See you again. Bye.